All right. Over the last couple of years, we've tracked the increase in right wing terror movements. The Southern Poverty Law Center has also tracked them. And I'm going to call your attention to an interview we did in September of 2013 with none other than Craig Cobb. He's this white separatist who wanted to have an all white town in North Dakota. He eventually went to jail for taunting someone with a rifle shotgun. I don't even remember now. And it turns out that he actually is a friend of the admitted murderer in those Kansas Jewish Community Center shootings. Another man that we interviewed on this show years ago, Frazier Glenn Miller. So we're going back to a classic, classic interview with Craig Cobb. Remember in this interview, he famously virally said that Jews invented gay Jews, invented homosexuality. They in invented the idea of gayness. And uh, we will review all of that and more in this week's classic interview. Craig Cobb, September 4th, 2013. Off we go. I'm joined today by Craig Cobb, who is a member of the creativity religion involved in non-military democratic village building in Leith, North Dakota, and who says it is supremacist for the government to test its social theories on unwilling human subjects. Uh, Mr. Cobb, you're a self-described white supremacist. You're in your early 60s. You've started buying up these lots of land kind of southwest of Bismarck. What's the what's the goal here? Are you trying to create kind of like a white enclave there? Yeah, that's correct, David. And actually, in terms of my being a white supremacist, as a member of the creativity religion, we are more white separatists. We don't want to lord over other races. We just want to be away from them. Right. To have our own Liebenstrom, our own space. So how did you develop this? I mean, I'm so interested in extremism and we're actually having someone in a week uh, next week who's going to be on who was born to extremist parents and actually realized the insanity of the situation she was in and, and was able to leave. Did you have racist parents or how did you get into this white separatist movement? No, I didn't have racist parents or racialist. I uh, grew up looking at like life and look magazine. You know, in those days, that's how we got information photo spreads and such. And I remember looking at pictures of Rudolf Hess and seeing him in Spandau. And then I wondered to myself, even though I was only 11 or 12, why a man would be kept in an entire prison like that. And then later, a few years later, after the cities burned in the riots of 65 through 67, I became a sort of supporter of George Wallace, who said famously there wasn't a dime's bit of difference between the two parties. Well, now there's not a wood and nickels difference. Yeah, no, I understand. You know. Mm -hmm. I, I talk a lot on this program about how increasingly Democrats and Republicans are both beholden to the same corporate interest and all of that stuff. But that doesn't necessarily get me to hating Jews and uh, distrusting women. Right. I mean, it doesn't that doesn't I'm not seeing the connection. Like, how did you decide that you don't like Jews and white people should have their own place to live? Well, They've slaughtered very many whites, 20 to 30 million in the Ukraine, the Gulag under the NKVD, Lekan, uh, Kaganovich and Leventry Beria under Stalin. And uh, the Western Europeans saw that and uh, they reacted. And of course, uh, a province of uh, Germany was ruled by Bolsheviks at one time. Uh, people do not want that. They went to Estonia, for example, and matriculated with PhDs in the late 30s. They were given autonomy by the Estonians and they paid them back. They thanked them by coming back with Molotov in 1940 with machine guns in the streets and nailed babies into the trees. And you right, can but Mr. Cobb, Mr. Cobb, in the yes. interest of keeping us focused, uh, yes. late 1930s matriculation, again, yeah. for most people, it doesn't lead to them hating Jews. I just I'm well, trying to see today, in other words, like what's your grief with Jews today? Well, they control the top 10 universities, the law schools, and uh, graduates of those schools become arbiters of thought on television and in our court system. OK, and now also, now we're getting into the meat of it. Yes, then. OK, so let's yes. explore that term control, right? Because this is actually I hope the audience is paying very close attention here, because this mm -hmm. idea of control is very common to anti-Semitic beliefs and kind of conspiratorial thinking, which is if we can ex acknowledge that there are any number of different groups from particular socioeconomic, ethnic or religious backgrounds who tend to do better or worse in certain areas of life. That's one thing. But then skipping to this idea of the conspiracy of control 
is where things seem to go off the deep end. So talk to me about that. Where is this idea of the conspiracy to control coming from? Well, let me backpedal to your term, anti-Semite. When a Jew tells you that you're an anti-Semite, what he means to tell you is that he's anti-white. That's Ex what it comes explain down. that. So, like for example, I'm, I, I'm. You're saying that because I'm Jewish and I use the term anti-Semitic, I'm mm -hmm. actually anti-white. Now, what if I use that term about someone, like for example, um, who who isn't white, right? If we talk about whoever it might be, Louis Farrakhan or whoever, mm -hmm. am I still anti-white when I use that term? Well, Louis Farrakhan understands Zionism very well. He's a very a great man for his people. Oh, but so you like you're him? You're not okay. a Semite. I, I think, David, you're not much Semite. You're Ashkenazi and Khazar mix. So uh, really, there are very relatively few Semites in Israel. About four-fifths of them are descended from Ashkenazi Jews, a lot of them from Poland, actually. And so when they say anti-Semitic, you know, they're including uh, Semites, Arabs. A lot of people don't know that Arabs are Semites. Right. So it, it's, a, it's a lying term, and it's a manipulative term. Okay, so you don't like the term, but we're not really getting into the control issue. Because we have limited time, I want to touch on one other thing. Um, yes. You're wanted in Canada right now. Um, why not go to Canada and face justice and face the charges that are against you right now? I will go probably when I'm 90 or 100 years old. Uh, I will tell you, when you say I'm wanted in Canada, that's for a so-called hate crime. And just like gay and so many other terms, these are terms devised by Jews to oppress whites. Okay, let's stop so, right there, but, though. Hold on a second, because that's, uh -huh. that's huge. I want to touch on that. So uh -huh. the term gay is a uh -huh. term devised by Jews to oppress white people. Expl let's explore that in detail. Well... When you're teaching kindergarten uh, boys to have flaccid sphincter muscles, look, what's gay about it? They have high STD, they have high alcoholism, high rate of sexual partners, high rate of dying from AIDS, high rate of suicide. What's gay about it? And I'll tell you an example on that is uh, in Estonia, they had an organization called LICT. Which but hold on, whoa, 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 Craig, I need to keep the focus. Let's put aside Estonia for a second and flaccid sphincters or whatever it is you want to, you're yeah. talking about. Well, that's what homosexuals have. But hold on a second. The, the question is, how, when and how and which Jews developed the term gay in order to oppress white people? Uh, you know, I don't know the etymology of it, but I can tell you they invented the word racist. It was Max Eastman, Trotsky's translator <laughs> in 1932. But you brought up you. you brought up gay, so I just wanted to follow up to see if you had any well, data listen, on that. It's ultimate. I'm not sure the precise etymology. I actually That's remember I figured, a lot of it yeah. in the early 70s when they changed that term. They're they're always uh, concocting terms. Now the one is for HUD affirmatively. Uh, uh, pushing housing. So what they're going to do in all these communities, like Leith, by the way, perhaps, yeah. is if your town is not 13% black and Hispanic, you know, Mexican, illegal or whatever, they'll ship them right in. That's why they can call me a neo-Nazi, uh, David, and the Associated Press a few weeks ago stopped using the term illegal alien, as yeah. did the University of California. But neo-Nazi is fine, you see. Okay, yeah. I gotcha. Well, I don't so know that's, if that's, that's exactly going to happen. Something. Yeah, right, right, right. So well, I'm sorry, what was that last thing? I say that's kike wordsmithing. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, hey, so last thing here. Um, you, you, I, I'm, as a logistical matter, purely as a logistical matter, mm -hmm. how do you develop and learn about all of this stuff you're talking about when you don't have, like, phone or running water and you live in the middle of nowhere? Like, as, just as a practical matter, I'm curious. Well, I have a Verizon hotspot, but I'll tell you, I live in the Bakken, and the average wage up there is $71,000 per year. There are 35,000 people in Williston making that money, and this town, Leith, is very close to that. We're going to get white guys up there and get them good jobs in the Bakken. So uh, I, I'm seldom at my home. I'm usually working 70 hours a week. What kind of and work do you, like, what kind of work does a guy like you do? I was working for Border States Paving in Fargo, and I was fired because of my religious activities, which propel me to do political activities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, listen, Craig Cobb, you've truly said it all. Uh, we're going to <laughs> keep following this white enclave community. As you know, of course, we didn't even get a chance to talk about it, but it really does seem like it's just not going to be allowed to, to even really take place. But that's probably something you disagree with. And we'll have well, to save it for the next time. I, I know that you have a lot to say about that. It, we're just out of time. I wish we had more. Um, but there's, right. a, there's a lot of controversy. We've been speaking with Craig Cobb. 
He is a member of the creativity religion. They are non-military, just in case people were wondering. We'll take a break and plenty more uh, and reaction after this.